task four, run support vector machine algorithm to classify the image. In this task, you will now run the support vector machine algorithm using the training samples that you created in the previous task to classify the image. To run the support vector machine algorithm, follow these steps. Assuming that you have Dorian excerpt TIFF highlighted in the content pane, and I do, from the imagery tab, select classification tools, classify. The image classification tool will open. At the top, it should say Dorian excerpt TIFF. Under classifier, select support vector machine if it is not already selected and make note of the other classifiers available. Under training sample, select or browse for the ABCO samples you created in task three, step two. And note that sometimes you'll have to refresh the directory for the ABCO samples to appear. That's what I just did as they weren't initially appearing. So I use the F5 key in Windows to refresh the directory. Under output classified dataset, name the output classification underscore one. And this is to indicate this is the first classification in case you do multiple classifications based on adjustments to the training samples or other factors. And also note that the output is going to go into the default geo database of my ArcGIS Pro project. You can use the default settings for the other tool parameters. Then click the run button. The overall process to classify the image will vary based on the numbers of samples and computing power you have. For example, when I prepared this exercise, the training classifier procedure took one minute and 57 seconds using the Dorian sample shapefile provided with the exercise. Generating the classified data set took 22 seconds. The classified data set that will be produced by the SVM algorithm will be a raster data set that applies the colors that were defined in the classification scheme to the output raster. So here we see the final result based on the output of the algorithm. And of course, I didn't want to make you watch the computer working here, but here's what the classification looks like. And this in fact is something that you can submit as a deliverable if you're doing this as a class exercise. So now in the next task, you'll learn how to assess the results of the classification in order to determine if the classification is sufficient for analytical needs or if further adjustments are needed in terms of the training samples used. Task five, Assess the classification. Create accuracy assessment points. As discussed previously in this video series, the value of a machine learning algorithm is ultimately determined by how effective the algorithm is at actually classifying items correctly. Determining the accuracy of a machine learning algorithm involves the general process of comparing samples that have been ground truthed by a human with the same samples that have been classified by the machine. In this step, you will generate accuracy assessment points as a first step of evaluating the accuracy of the SVM algorithm that was run in task four. Generating accuracy assessment points can be a somewhat labor intensive process. So a set of accuracy assessment points have been provided with this exercise that you can use instead. Follow these steps to use the Create Accuracy Assessment Point tool in ArcGIS Pro. However, I will show you how you can create your own accuracy assessment points. 
Follow these steps to use the Create Accuracy Assessment Points tool in ArcGIS Pro. Go to the Analysis tab, Tools, under Geoprocessing, enter Create Accuracy Assessment Points. and enter the following into the Create Accuracy Assessment Points tool. The input raster or feature class data set is going to be classified one, the output that was just created, and the output accuracy assessment points we will call Dorian assessment points and the target field is classified and we'll do 100 points and keep in mind the more points you add the more ground truthing you'll have to do and we'll use a stratified random sampling strategy and we'll click the run button ArcGIS Pro will then generate a series of assessment points. And let's make these a little more visually prominent. So I'm going to double click on this pink circle shape and just make it red so you can see it more clearly. And what you want to do now is compare each assessment point with the value of the classified raster that was created in task four. So for example, if I zoom in and I'll click on this red dot here, you'll see that it says classified 11 and ground truth negative one. So what you wanna do is to go through every point and update the ground truth value to what it actually is. This is where you're adding your judgment as a human. For example, if the assessment point says that a classified cell is value 11 damaged tree, update the ground truth field in the assessment points from negative one to the correct code value based on the numeric codes from the classification schema you first work with in task three. This is where you are adding your judgment as a human. For example, if the assessment point says that a classified cell is value 11 or damaged tree and your human inspection of the Dorian excerpt image shows that the assessment point is in fact over an area of damaged trees, the SVM algorithm classified this pixel of the Dorian image correctly, and thus the ground truth field in this assessment point table should be updated from negative one to 11 or damaged tree. Repeat this verification based on human judgment procedure process for all of the features in the assessment point feature class. Also, you can use the imagery base layer provided in ArcGIS Pro to compare the Dorian disaster image with the condition on Abco Island before Dorian struck to make a more informed judgment. I'll show you a basic workflow for doing this if you do decide to update the assessment points. One way I found is easier to do this is to open the attribute table of the assessment points highlight a row do a zoom to on that row and you can see this particular point is right at the north edge of the image and as per what I just discussed it was classified as 11 and it does look to be, in fact, in the damaged tree area. So I'm going to update ground truth from negative 1 to 11. 
As another example, I'll look at this one that was classified as 23 or a destroyed building. So I highlight the row, zoom to it, and in fact, it looks to be an incorrect classification as this is a blue tarp instead of a destroyed building. So in that case, I'll update its value to be 21, as that is the code for a blue tarp. Repeat the same general process for all of the points that were generated. However, to save some time, I'm actually going to load in the assessment points that are provided with the lab as I won't make you go through watching me uh, ground truth all of these points. So what I'm going to do is actually remove this out. And if I go to catalog, folders, project folder, and then the folder of the data sets that you downloaded with the lab and go under assessment data, um, I have a same, the same name, Dorian assessment points. I'm going to drag and bring those over onto my map. And I'll double click on them to make them, um, I'll make them a, a red square. And if you look at the attribute table, you can see that all of the ground truth values have been filled in. So I do encourage you to go through the process of creating ground truth data. It is labor intensive, but it is a good exercise if you're new to working with machine learning algorithms. So after you have ground truth each of the assessment points, you have a couple of choices as how to proceed next. For example, you could go back and redo your training samples and reclassify the image based on any errors you found when doing your ground truth assessment. Then, after rerunning the classification a second or more times, you could then use the Update Accuracy Assessment Points tool to adjust your ground truth points to account for changes you made in the reclassification. However, if you are satisfied with your assessment points, you can then move on to the final stage of assessing the accuracy of the machine learning algorithm and compute a confusion matrix, a process that is described in the next step. The following are references used for this lecture. Hi, this is Brian Tomaszewski. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification icon to stay up to date on new videos from this channel. Thanks for watching.